Today, we're gonna to teach you the basics of After Effects tracking. Let's go. What's up guys, my name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. After Effects tracking is one of the most essential and foundational skills that you need to know in After Effects pretty much to do anything in the program. Probably almost second to rotoscoping. After Effects tracking is basically the analysis of a video clip where After Effects uses its AI programs to create 3D tracking points and basically put 2D objects into your 3D video. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it'll make a lot more sense later on in the tutorial. With After Effects tracking, you can do a lot of cool stuff like put 3D text in floating sky, replace backgrounds, change in environments, add in extra visual effects components, and also do a bunch more crazy stuff with 3D rendering such as Element 3D and Cinema 4D. The list really goes on and on and on, but to those just starting out, you may be really confused on where actually do I even start with After Effects tracking. Don't worry because today we got you covered. But before we dive into the tutorial, if you're interested in really spicing up your video edits and saving a bunch of time, definitely make sure to check out our store at 11%.net. There we seriously spill all the sauce on preset packs. We have preset packs ranging from title cards all the way to 3D overlay. I really dumped my heart and soul into creating presets that would just overall help you save time, but also help you create really sick edits as well. All the packs are extremely high quality. And matter of fact, we just dropped our new paint preset pack, which is super easy to use. It comes with over 50 presets of different paint animations that you can literally just drag and drop onto your project. All the preset packs are really fun and simple to use. So definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. That's really how you guys support me and keep me going. So really it means the world. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right guys, so now that we're finally inside of After Effects, I have three clips loaded up right here that we're all gonna test different effects on, okay? First up on our list, very, very, very simple. I just wanna track a text to somebody's face, or I just wanna stabilize some motion. Very, very simple. So this first clip right here, we have a subject, they're just kinda of dancing, we have some basic movement. We're gonna come over here to our tracker tab. Now, if you don't see this, come over here to window, click workspace, and click all panels. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first focus on these two options right here, track motion and stabilize motion, okay? Now, stabilize motion, I'm gonna start with first because this is probably the easiest and makes most sense. So we're gonna click stabilize motion. Immediately, you get a first initial track tracking point. What is this? Whoa, what's going on right here? Don't worry. So there's these two boxes right here. I'm gonna explain what both of them are. The first box right here on the inside is going to be the actual area that's gonna be tracked. This is basically the image that has to stay still throughout the entire video. Okay, so that's your main tracking point. That's what we're actually tracking. The second box is just the range that that box, that first box can move in. So if your first box is probably moving like really far across the scene in just a couple of frames, you're gonna wanna make the second box really big. Now, might you add, if you make the second box really big, it's gonna be more data for After Effects to have to track and also possibly could increase the risk of After Effects messing up your track. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select her nose right here. And I'm just gonna make this box not too big, but just about this big, because I feel like that's how much this box is gonna be moving. And once I'm ready, go to the very, very beginning frame of your scene and just hit the play button. Now After Effects is gonna do a pretty good job of tracking. You can see it might have some jumps, like we had a little jump right there. But other than that, it's doing a pretty decent job right here. If you have really severe jumps, like let's say throughout one of the clips, it just like jumps from like here to there, then you're just gonna have to redo the track and then try readjusting your boxes sizes and stuff like that because all these factors add up and it just can incur with the ability of After Effects to properly track your video clip. So now once we have a perfect tracking right here, that was honestly really, really good, not gonna lie. What we're gonna do is we're just going to hit, um, we make sure we're on stabilize, and then I'm just gonna hit apply. And it's gonna say X and Y dimensions, yes, okay. And boom, now it looks like nothing happened, but now you can see if we play it out, the video clip seems to be moving. And if you hold your mouse in that one spot in your nose where we track, you can see that it does not once move throughout the entire scene, which is really cool. Ways to increase the, the, the coolness of this effect is we can just go ahead and scale up this clip. And of course, I always like to add just one effect, my favorite effect, which is going to be a nice radial blur. So I'm gonna come to my effect panel, I'm gonna search for CC radio blur and I'm just gonna apply it, boom, there we go. And then I'm just going to increase the amount to something like, uh, let's do let's do about four. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that focus point to her nose. And then that way we have this nice motion blur that goes on. It's gonna, it's gonna load a little bit slower, but you can see now this is really, really sick effect. 
Now, that is the very, very basic first effect that we're gonna go over with what you can do with After Effects tracking. Now let's do some more advanced stuff. Now let's say you wanna do something a little bit fancier. Let's say we wanna track some text, like some text on my hand right here, and I just want it to like move around. We're just gonna go ahead and pretty much do the same thing. Click on our first clip, and then we're gonna hit, instead of stabilized motion, we're gonna hit track motion, okay? Now, you're gonna hit track motion, you get the same two boxes. We are just gonna go ahead and track our nose again, because this is probably one of the easiest focal points to track. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's hope After Effects does a good job. All right, we had one little tiny jump, but it's honestly not that bad. So now once we have our tracking applied, you're like, okay, so how do we actually apply some effects to this? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our layer, layer tab right here, and we're gonna hit new, and we're gonna create a nice null object. Now you can see, boom, we created a null object. It looks like nothing happened, because what is a null object? It's, it's actually nothing. It's a base layer that you can use to apply effects and tracking data too. It, that's pretty much all it is. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select back on our layer, which we did the tracking with. We're gonna hit edit target. And now we are going to select this and we're gonna select our null object. So we're gonna select all the data is, we're basically saying, let's apply all this tracking data to our null object. And now I'm just gonna hit apply. It's gonna say X and Y coordinates, yes. And boom. Now you can see if we select our null object, you can see it's this little red invisible box and it is moving with our subject, which is pretty cool. Now it's time to apply effects or like text or something. So I just went ahead and wrote out some very, very simple text right here, very definitive and clear. I like to use this, this particular, I just like to use this method of tracking for Instagram tags. It's a very common effect. You'll see it used a lot in YouTube, YouTube videos. So we're just gonna be doing an Instagram tag right here. Watch very carefully. Come over here to this pick whip icon, parent pick whip icon. Now, if you don't see this, go down right here to this little box that says toggle switches modes and then you might be able to see it better. This was a really, really, really big thing for me uh, when I first started out in After Effects. This is one of the first effects that I tried doing when I first started learning this program. And I remember my pick whip tool was not visible and the tutorial did not show how to do it. And I was like, I was lost and I, it destroyed me. But yeah, if you don't see that pick whip tool, just hit parent toggle switches modes, that usually helps. So now what you're gonna do is we're going to drag the pick whip of the text to our null object. So I'm gonna create, drag this to our null object. Now you can see if we play this out, the text is now tracked and you can see it's tracked to her nose and kind of tracked to her face. And with that, that is our level two of our tracking. Very, very cool stuff that you can do here. And of course, this doesn't have to be text. This could be like say images or even videos and GIFs and stuff. I'll drag in this image or shadowing what we might be working with next. So I could just drag in this image and just literally pick whip this to the null as well. And you can see, boom, now this image is tracked to our subject as well. And it's just really cool stuff that you can do with the null object. Now guys, it is time to move onto our third layer of After Effects tracking. And this is going to be 3D tracking. Now we're gonna get into some real cool 3D stuff. And this is gonna be what I'd say are a lot of the cooler effects. Straight up right here, I have this cool little drone shot, shot in Ohio, down in Ohio, down. <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be selecting this drone layer shot and I'm come back to my tracker and instead of tracking motion or stabilized motion or wave stabilized, whatever this is, you're going to hit this button, track camera. Now this is probably one of the most powerful buttons in After Effects, Bruh. second to the rotoscope. And boom, once it is finally done rendering and loading out, you're gonna see we have this nice sick little clip with a bunch of cool, what I like to call the 3D flowers. Now these are all basically 3D tracking points that After Effects has defined and assigned to each unit of your video. That's why it kind of takes so long to render and load. Now really quick, if you don't see this, because a lot of tutorials like to skip on the errors. If you don't see this and then you get this big red error and it says, composition setting does not match, duh, duh, duh. you can't track. Very, very simple. Tell After Effects to shut the fuck up. No, I'm just kidding. You come over here to composition and then you hit composition settings and then you are going to basically just change the width and height to the exact original dimensions of your video. I know this sounds very tedious, very stupid, but After Effects is just like that. I don't know why. Um, so if you don't know the dimensions of that, I don't know. On Mac, this is how you can do it. I don't know how you can do it on Windows. You gotta figure that on your own. I just like to right click on the, the clip and then hit get info. And then it'll just basically tell you all the info and it tells you 1920 by 1080. Boom. My width and height are 1920 by 1080. And, and that's it, boom. Now we have a bunch of cool 3D tracking points. And if you select on any group of some, you will get like these cool 
cool little red targets. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. So what I'm basically gonna be doing right now, I'm gonna be applying some text in the sky and I want it to be like floating and feel like it's there actually in this video scene. So I'm just going to select on any group of targets. It doesn't have to be on any point in the timeline. I'm just gonna select it, like right click on, get the target, right click the target. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit create solid and camera. Now you can do create text and camera as well. You know, either or works. You wanna select on the target that is the angle that your text is going to be facing. Now I have this nice little track solid. I'm going to right click it and I'm just gonna hit pre-compose. I'm just gonna call this 3D track object. Now it looks like nothing changed, but we have a pre-comp. I can double click this pre-comp. There you go, boom. Now I'm inside of this pre-comp and we have this little green square, which is cool, but we don't want a green square to attract our building. We want some text. So I'm gonna delete that green square and I'm just gonna type down in Ohio. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna type Columbus, Ohio. I don't know how to spell Columbus. Now we have some text in our box and it's nice and transparent. And if we come back to our original comp, you can see, boom, that text is right there, but it's so tiny and super small. So very, very simple fix. You can just literally hold shift and drag and scale it up. And I don't know, it's pretty simple. Not, not much more complicated than that. If anything is off, you can of course just adjust the rotation and the position. You have this nice little cool 3D like control panel right here to help you fix the position and stuff. And you can see it's super cool because we can move this text in 3D space now. And now if you play that out, boom, the text is literally looks like it's floating over the building, which is sick if you ask me. But if you really wanna make it even cooler, you can come to your effects and presets and you can search for drop shadow. Now you can basically just increase the distance and softness and kind of try to make it like accurate to the actual scene of where the actual shadows are in real life. So it looks like the shadows are going this way because the sun is coming this way as well. So I'm just gonna kind of put it in that direction and boom. Now you can see if we play this out, not only is this text floating in the sky, but it is adding a shadow to the ground, which is sick because it makes it feel like it's actually there. So boom, right off the bat, that is our third method to tracking in After Effects. Super, super sick. Let's go ahead and export that. And guys, now lastly, onto our final 3D tracking method. This is this is it. This is the final. Um, we are going to be tracking. We are going to be putting something into the sky of our video. So I have this clip right here. It's in 4K. Now, might I add, remember how the issue with composition size, um, I'm just going to right click this and I'm going to hit transform and I'm just gonna hit fit to comp. But what I'm basically gonna be doing for this effect is showing how you can actually take this tracking to the next level and why this tracking is so incredibly powerful. It's like changing the sky or changing the background, which is exactly what we're gonna do in this clip. So this clip right here, I'm just gonna go back to our tracking one last time, our tracker, and and I'm going to hit track motion. Just very, very simple track motion point. Oh my God, this point is so tiny because it's in, everything is in like 4K. Um, and I'm just gonna add this right here to the top of his car because I know that's a point that's pretty much gonna stay the same. Um, doesn't move that much, very, very simple. I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip and just hit the play and let's see if it tracks very well. Please, please, please. So now we have a very basic, simple track to this Jeep. And once again, we're going to go ahead and apply that null object. And then I'm going to come back to that clip, hit edit target, and then just basically apply this to the null three object. Boom, and apply, boom. All right, now we have that null object track. Now it's time to go ahead and add a space planet into the sky. What, we can do that? Yes, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this clip right here into the sky. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to basically drag this pick whip to the null three. And now you can see, boom, the planet is tracked in the sky, but it looks ugly AF. Don't worry, all you can literally do is we're gonna hit toggle switches modes and I'm gonna change this blending mode right here to screen. And voila, you can see this planet is nicely tracked into the sky. Now, honestly, uh, a way to make this effect even better is you can 3D track this. Actually, what I should have done was I should have applied the tracking to something like this tree or far, something farther off in the distance so that the planet doesn't like move too much. But you can see, um, the planet is, it looks pretty decent if you ask me. With that guys, that is a final level four effect that you can do for After Effects tracking. I hope at the end of this tutorial, you got some basics of how to track in After Effects. Now we have so many more tutorials on this effect. You can go check it out here. The next effect I recommend you checking out is our Element 3D tutorial on how you can actually apply an animate 3D cool text in the sky, which is definitely a killer effect that you need to add to your portfolio skill set. But anyways, with that guys, here's the final result. 
If you guys made it to the end of the tutorial, I just want to say thank you again so much for watching. If you managed to find any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free. All this content is free. So really, it means so much to me. And once again, if you're interested in checking out 11percent.net where you can purchase any of our preset packs that will just help save your time and speed up your editing workflow, which I honestly say is the best investment for any video editor, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. Please, please. We drop preset packs there constantly. And with each preset pack, they come with their own individual tutorial of exactly how to use it for your video editing software. And honestly, they're all really extremely simple. And seriously, I just wanted to create something that would have really helped me out when I started out. So definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.